Hello, I'm Andy, and uh, this is a video about how to use GitHub and other things a bit like it, like GitLab. Um, if you want to know more about Git, I've made a whole series of videos about Git. Um, if you go to my YouTube page and click on playlists, you'll see a playlist there called Git. Um, in order to follow some of this stuff, you're going to have to understand uh, quite a few of the things in those videos, so um, you may want to check back there. So this is what we're going to talk about. Um, how to get hold of some code from GitHub, uh, how to make your own project on GitHub and contribute to it, um, how to contribute to another project uh, which will involve forking and then making merge requests, making pull requests um, onto that project and keeping those up to date as the project moves on. Okay, so first of all, just to get a copy of um, some code from a GitHub repository. That's the first and easiest thing we're going to try and do. So in order to do that, uh, so this this won't let you uh, it doesn't get you ready to be contributing back uh, just to, you just want to get the code so go to the github uh, page for that project and then find uh, towards the middle right the clone URL so here's a little screenshot down there on the right you'll see there's a little section where you can get hold of the clone URL and what you want to do is get hold of the HTTPS uh, clone URL to do this just to get hold of the code um, not the SSH one. So click on that HTTPS, unless it's already, unless it already says HTTPS, and that will give you the HTTPS URL. And then to clone it, yeah, make sure you've got Git installed, and then you can just say Git clone, and then paste in that, um, that HTTPS URL, uh, and that will Git will basically just download the code um, into a directory that's named after the project, um, and you'll have that code. And it's it's not far off from being set up to contribute as well, but it's not the right way to do it if you want to um, send in pull requests. Okay, so next thing, let's talk about how to make your own project, not contributing to someone else's, but just making your own. Well, in that top right near your face on GitHub, click on the plus, uh, and then choose new repository, and it'll ask you the name and stuff like that. Um, uh, a few little bits and bobs to set it up, but that's uh, basically made. Uh, in order for this to work, though, um, if you want to be able to push back to it again, you're going to need to make sure you've got an SSH public key uploaded onto GitHub. Um, uh, the short answer of how to do that is you type in SSH keygen, SSH dash keygen on your Linux machine, and it will generate a key, and then you, you can follow the GitHub instructions to upload it. But there are more instructions on uh, how to do this on GitHub. So basically, click on your face, click settings. And then the personal settings thing will pop up. Click on SSH keys um, and paste in your public key and under, under where it says SSH keys. Um, it, and GitHub have instructions on what to do if that's not enough. Okay, so once you've made your own project, you've made sure you've got an SSH key uploaded. You can uh, clone your project, which means pull it down onto your machine. The way you do that is you go to that clone URL bit on the middle right of the page. But this time you click on SSH. So when you're going to be pushing back, you need uh, the SSH URL. Well, the easiest thing to do is use the SSH URL, um, which will use that public key that you've just uploaded to confirm who you are um, uh, when you do a git push. So um, to get hold of the code on, to, on your machine after you've made, I mean, it's not there's no code there because you've just made an empty repository, but to get hold of that uh, copy of that project on your machine, you clone it via SSH by typing git clone, and then use that SSH URL that you uh, copied um, from that clone URL section. Uh, that, that again will make a directory named after the project. When you're inside that directory now, if you type git push, uh, because you've got uh, because you're authenticated via SSH, um, you're allowed to push to that repository because it's your repository. Um, so you type git push, or if you prefer, you could type git push origin master, which means the same thing. Once you've made some changes, you type git push, and it's, it sends your changes up to that repository. And you can only push to a repository that you kind of own or you have permission to push to. Um, so this is why we're using the SSH URL uh, in this case, because this is a repository that you own, that you're allowed to push to. So here's a picture of what's going on. So um, there's some changes that are in the GitHub repository which is the thing that's, that's held on GitHub that um, can be seen publicly by other people. So you've got three commits called commit1, commit2, and commit3 that are in your GitHub repository. And you've got those same three commits on your 
uh, computer, so that's where you started off. Then you made two new commits, you made some changes in your project, uh, so they're called commit, new commit 4 and new commit 5. Um, so now on your local computer, you have two extra commits. You've got the three original ones and two more, uh, and the branch, your master branch, um, is pointing at commit number 5, but also git tracks um, the branches of other uh, repositories that it's interested in. So on my computer you have uh, a remote branch, remote tracking branch called origin slash master, uh, which basically is remembering where the master of your GitHub repository is. It's calling your GitHub repository origin. The thing you cloned from gets called origin. It's a remote called origin. Um, so when you cloned from GitHub, um, it made this remote called origin. It keeps track of where origins are. Uh, master branch is, so it knows that uh, uh, the GitHub repository still still got a master branch pointing at commit number three, but on your local computer you've made two new commits and you've moved your master branch on, whenever you commit your master branch pointer moves on to point at your latest commit. So we need to get those two things in sync and the way you do that is you say git push origin master, which basically says um, take, uh, take the branch I'm currently on, which is master, and make origin master, so the branch called master on the remote called origin, the same as me. And if Git's able to do that smoothly without any conflicts happening, uh, then it just does it. Now the default in a setup like we've said, when, it, when you type git push, is it actually does git push origin master. So you don't need to bother typing the origin master part in this case, but I want to illustrate what's really going on. You're saying to Git, take the branch I'm currently on um, and, and use that to um, that synchronize that with the branch called master on the remote called origin. Right, so once you've done that git push origin master, now the GitHub repository and your repository agree, so your changes have uh, been pushed up to the public repository. So that's pretty simple. Um, so let's take a little break to talk about a few bits of terminology and stuff. Hopefully some of this you picked up from the previous videos, um, but let's just recap and try and make it a bit clearer. Um, so what is a commit? A commit is um, it's not a diff or anything like that, it's uh, a frozen state of the code. So that commit ID is a completely uh, reliable, almost completely reliable um, uh, record of the state of the code at a particular moment, plus all the history that's happened in order to get you to that state. Um, and then commits have things called parents, which are basically commits that, that happened immediately before them. Normally there's just one because there's a linear history, but if you do a merge commit or something like that, that merge commit will have two parents because there's two previous states that you're kind of merging together. A branch is something that points to a commit. So we, we saw before the master branch, um, the branch that you're on, which often is, is the master branch when you're starting out, um, when you do a commit, that branch pointer moves on to point out the latest commit that you've just committed. So the git commit command does two things. It makes a new commit and it moves on the branch pointer to point at the commit you just made. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, when you start off in a, in a um, start normal Git repository, there'll be just one branch called master, and then you can make more branches called whatever you like, but master um, is normally the one that you think of as the kind of main one. Um, and branches live inside things called repositories. So at the moment we've talked about two repositories, one on your local machine, one on GitHub. And in Git, there's no sense of a kind of master-slave relationship. All repositories uh, contain all of your history. But when we're working with something like GitHub, we often think of a kind of a master-slave type relationship where the, um, the the GitHub one is the kind of official published repository and you can mess about, do whatever you like in your local repository and decide just to push the bits you want. Okay, uh, further side notes. What is a commit? Uh, uh, what, is, what are the commands to do? So this is particularly what I'm interested in here is what's the, the scope of the different commands that we do. That some commands affect just one little area and some um, affect wider areas. So the git commit command just makes a commit and repoints the current branch pointer to it. Git branch just makes a new branch in this repository, so all these things so far are just inside this repository. Uh, git checkout just changes what branch you're looking at, or it can change some other stuff, but for now let's just say it changes which branch you're looking at. Uh, git merge does things with two branches, uh, the branch you're on and another branch, and basically says get me all the commits from another branch and um, uh, make them part of this branch as well. Uh, whereas git rebase says, take all the stuff that I've done on this branch 
and make it look like they happened after the stuff on another branch. So those things all happen within this repository. That's my point, my main point here. Whereas git pull and git push do things across multiple repositories. So git pull says get all the commits from a particular branch on a remote repository. Not the whole remote repository, but a particular branch on the remote repository. Uh, pull them in and kind of merge them into whatever branch I'm currently on in my local repository. And git push behaviour is slightly different between different versions of git. But if you say git push origin master or if you say git push remote branch name, it basically says take everything I've done on the branch I'm currently on and make it available on this other branch that I'm pushing to. And git will refuse to do that if there's any kind of conflict or anything like that. Anyway, my point is git pull and git push are commands that um, work across different repositories, but they work on a per branch basis. So you're saying that do something with this branch um, on the local uh, in the local repository uh, and some other branch in the remote repository. Um, but yeah, the other commands that uh, commit and branch and so on, they happen in, in the current repository you're in. Git pull and git push do things across to several different repositories uh, and in particular with single branches in the local and the remote repository. Okay, so that was just a little bit of terminology to make sure we're absolutely clear everything we're talking about because unfortunately um, in order to do things like pull requests in GitHub and understand what's going on, you need to get these terms, what they mean. Okay, so how do you contribute to someone else's GitHub repository? This is the difficult bit. This is what we've been working up to. So someone else has a GitHub repository and you want to send them some code that you've done uh, to make their stuff better. So the first thing is don't just clone their code and put it down to your machine. The easiest thing to do is click on that fork button in the top right. That basically makes your own copy of their repository on GitHub. So you haven't got anything on your local machine after you've done that, but you've made a copy on GitHub of their stuff, which is basically your version of their thing. Don't worry, they won't be offended, they like it. Okay, so, uh, that, yeah, as I said, that makes a new repository, which we're going to call Origin. Normally Git calls um, the, the repository that you kind of own that you're pushing to, we, we call it Origin. And then the original repository that existed before you clicked fork, we're going to call that upstream, and that's the normal thing that we will call, uh, that you tend to call the, the, the repository that you're contributing to uh, upstream. So, now that you've clicked fork, the next thing to do is clone your fork. So don't clone the original that you were looking at, clone your fork. <clears throat> so to do that, you type git clone, and then you use the ssh clone URL for your fork. You can tell whose fork it is. If you look at the top of the page in GitHub, um, it will say, uh, if it's my fork of Rabbit Escape, it will say Andy Balaam slash Rabbit Escape at the top of the screen. Um, and if it's someone else's, it will say Bob slash Rabbit Escape at the top of the, the screen. So make sure you're on your fork and then get the SSH clone URL, do a git clone, and it'll have your username in it, which is why I put my username in red there. Uh, and now here's the situation. You've got that original repository, which was the one you were interested in contributing back to, which we're going to call upstream. Um, that's on GitHub. Then you've got a fork which was created when you clicked fork. And then you've done a git clone of your fork. Uh, so on your computer you've got another repository which is a clone of your fork. And when you did that git clone it set up the name of a remote called origin which is pointing at your fork on GitHub. We haven't yet got anything called upstream. We're going to make ourselves a remote called upstream later. Okay so how to make a pull request, which here I've written merge request, but they're normally called pull requests. Uh, make a, On your local machine, um, uh, in your local repository, make a local branch, which I'll show you how to do, make some changes, and then you push your branch up to your fork, and then you click on pull request on GitHub, not merge request. Okay, so, to make a branch, you say git branch, and then give the branch a name, that makes a new branch, and then you say git checkout, the name of that branch, that means you, you switch so that you're now on that branch. Then you can do some commits, which are what those two other things are illustrating. Now that you've got um, now you've got a branch on your local repository with some extra changes in it. Uh, and here's the picture of that. So on my computer I've got three commits and master is still pointing at commit three because I haven't done anything on master. But I switched onto a branch called Fixbug and I added two more commits on with bug fix part one and bug fix part two and nothing's changed in github yet okay so what i want to do is push so if i say git push origin fixbug that means take the branch i'm on which is called which is also coincidentally called fixbug 
um, and push it into Origin into a branch called Fixburg. And that branch doesn't yet exist in Origin. Origin is your fork of this project. Uh, anyway, Fixbug doesn't yet exist there, so Git push will happily just make you a branch called Fixbug, uh, and it will it will make it look exactly like the branch called Fixbug that you're on, or whatever branch you're on. But we happen to be on the branch called Fixbug. So once you've done that Git push, it looks like this. So the your fork, which we're calling Origin it, from our local machine, uh, now has a branch on it also called Fixbug, which looks the same as your your local branch called Fixbug. So that was easy. We just did a push. We did a push of a different branch, not the not the master branch, but other than that, it's the same. Then we click pull request on GitHub. I'm pretty sure it is called pull request. I don't know why I've decided to call it merge request everywhere. So click pull request on GitHub. Uh, and when you push a branch like this to GitHub, it will pop up a little thing saying, you just pushed some stuff into a branch. Do you want to make a pull request? So there's quite an easy button uh, to press. And basically, once you've made that pull request, you just wait for the, um, the maintainer of this project to accept your pull request. Uh, you're done. Except, um, oh, we'll see. Except, uh, yeah. So once they do that, once they click on merge, the reason why I've been talk calling it a merge request is because when a merge, when a pull request comes to me, I have to click merge. I have to say merge this pull request. Anyway, uh, once your your pull request, once you clicked on uh, create a pull request, the person who owns the repository you were originally looking at gets notified that there's a, uh, a waiting pull request and they can click on merge. When they click on merge, it pulls your stuff, but it doesn't pull it into a branch called Fixburg, it pulls it into their master branch. Um, it's now part of the real code of that repository. And you're done. You've managed to contribute, well done. Unless uh, they didn't like what you've done, they want you to change it a bit, which by the way is completely normal uh, and good. Uh, and Don't be sad about it. Uh, it, it, no one ever gets it right the first time they contribute to a new project. Uh, keep going, keep plugging away at it. People sending your stuff back because they want you to fix it doesn't mean uh, they hate you or you're rubbish. It means they're interested in your stuff and they want to get it right so that it's uh, in their project. Okay, so don't be discouraged. So in order to improve it, uh, remember the situation we were in before. We've got a branch called master on our local repository and we've got another branch called fixbug in which we've done something, but what we've done isn't quite right. And we've pushed that stuff uh, up to our fork of the original thing, which is called Origin. Um, uh, and we've pushed the stuff that isn't quite right. So that's publicly available on GitHub as well, in, in a branch called Fixburg on your fork. But that's okay. We can change it. So Git lets you change history. It just lets you know that you've changed history whenever you do, because all those IDs change. So first thing we're going to do, or the plan of what we're going to do is change history locally to make things how they should have looked and then do a force push to your fork which kind of overwrites that fork with the wrong stuff in with some new stuff that's more right by the way uh if you don't want to if if the maintainer doesn't want you to do this to to change history like this uh you might just add on more commits to your stuff and then make a pull request and that's not very difficult there's not much to show you there so i won't show you that bit if the maintainer wants you to actually edit the stuff you've done, change history in that in that, that set of commits that you've done, um, so that it's kind of right first time, it looks like you got it right first time, this is what you should be doing. Uh, and often that is what they want to do. They don't want a whole uh, change history polluted with, uh, I did this commit and then I had to fix it up because so-and-so said that the um, what spacing was wrong. Or so, -so, -so. Yeah, so they actually want you to to come back with just a clean set of commits, which is just make the change that you're trying to make um, as if you got it right first time. So that's what we're doing. Uh, so you change history locally to make it look like you got it, got it right first time locally, and then you do a force push to your fork. So ways in which you might change history, things like you might do a git commit minus minus amends to change um, uh, the, the commit message or something like that. Um, you might do a git, re git rebase minus i uh, master, which basically says, uh, let me fiddle around with commits uh, of everything since master. Let me redo the stuff uh, in my fixed bug branch, which happened after uh, master. Um, we also might, you also might just go back one commit. So if you say git reset head carry like that, it says basically throw away the commit, but keep the, ch the code changes that were in that commit and make them in my local uh, working tree so that I can uh, edit them again, make them better, and then do a git commit again. Anyway, somehow you end up with a history that's been changed in your local repository, so you've got a fixed bug branch that 
um, that it, it has a different history from the original one that you had. Uh, and because the history of it is different, because you've kind of thrown away some commits or you've modified some commits so they do something different, you can't do a git push origin fix bug because git will refuse and it will say, no, you're changing history. But if you do a git push at minus F origin fix bug, um, then it will just overwrite what you've got in that uh, fix bug branch on your GitHub fork uh, with the new stuff that you've got. So you, the reason you're allowed to do that is because you own that fork, so you can do whatever you like. You should never do that. If people are tracking one of your branches, especially your master branch on GitHub, never do a git push minus F because it completely messes up their history. It's a nightmare. But if you're just making a little branch to do a pull request like this, uh, you totally can uh, do a git push minus F to change it, uh, so long as no one's tracking it. And then it, uh, as soon as you do that, the merge request is updated to show the changes as you've now made them with this change history. So once you've done that git push minus F, you can you can just wait again and see whether the maintainer will pick it up, or you might want to add a comment to your pull request saying, "Oh, I've updated it. Can you have another look?" Um, wait, and hopefully they'll just merge it in. But if they haven't merged it in yet, uh, or um, things might be getting a bit tricky. So uh, what's happened here in this illustration is that while you were working on that fork, and maybe while you were fixing the problems with it uh, well, on that pull request, um, someone else has made some changes in the original repository, which we're going to be calling upstream. Uh, so here we can see commit 4 and commit 5 in red have been made on that original repository, uh, the thing that you forked uh, from, not the thing you forked to. So basically now you've got a, a problem that you've got your changes are happening after commit 3, but also some other stuff's happening after commit 3. So there's a kind of conflict in the history there, and we need to resolve that. And most maintainers won't want to do that themselves. What they want you to do is go back and make it look like that never happened. So uh, you can either do that with a merge or a rebase. We're going to do it with a rebase because it's a, uh, it's a little pull request like this. You make it, You want to make it look like it's happening right now, even though you may have done it a bit earlier. That's what I think. Okay, so here's how you keep in sync with changes on upstream. First thing to do is in your local repository you need to add upstream as a remote. I'll show you how to do that. Then you need to pull from your the master branch of upstream onto your local master branch. Then you need to rebase your new branch called Fixbugs on top of your local master. So that's the bit where we rebase stuff. And then once we've got that, the changes that, uh, that, that Fixbugs branch that we've got is now ready uh, to apply cleanly on top of the history um, with the new commits in. So we can just push that back up to our fork and ask them to um, accept our pull request again. So let's do that step by step. So first of all, add upstream as a remote. So you get the HTTPS URL of the original repository and you say git remote add upstream. So upstream is the name, but you should definitely call it upstream uh, um, if, uh, if you don't know what you're doing. Um, and then after that is the HTTPS HTTPS URL, clone URL, of the original thing that you originally wanted to contribute to. So you're basically saying, let me refer directly to this thing called upstream from my local repository. So previously we've just been pushing to um, to our fork, but this is the original upstream. We want to be able to see it. We obviously can't push to it because we don't have permission, but we can pull from it. So what we're going to do is pull all that stuff onto our master branch of our local repository. And hopefully you haven't committed any commits onto your master branch. Um, you've only committed commits onto a branch called Fixbugs or something else. Um, so if so, uh, this is fairly, fairly simple. So what you do is you say git checkout master, and then you say git pull, and it, it, you can add this minus minus ff minus only, which means um, only do this if I haven't committed anything within myself onto master. Anyway, we're saying git pull upstream master. What that means is, get all the stuff that happened on the master branch on upstream, which is that original repository, and add it on top of the branch that I'm on, which is master, because I did git checkout master a minute ago. And the minus minus ff only means um, just uh, refuse to do anything if I've actually messed up and I've done some stuff on master. If you know you've done some stuff on master and uh, uh, you're okay with that, you can do a git pull minus minus rebase. And what that means is take the stuff I've done on master and reapply it after these commits that I'm getting from upstream. So the easiest thing to do is not do anything on master and you won't have that problem. Right. Okay, so now here's the situation. So in the top left, you've got the original GitHub repository you're interested in contributing to, which has commits four and five added onto it. 
in the top right you've got your um, your fork of that which has got your um, pull request change in it uh, but it's not yet merged with um, these new commits and then on your local repository at the bottom you've got two branches you've got your master branch which now looks the same as the upstream master branch because you did a git pull upstream master on it and then you've got this fixed bug branch which kind of clashes with it because it, um, both of them have a parent or have commit three as a parent um, so that, that commit four happens after commit three but also bug fix part one happens after commit three so we've got to do something about this to make uh, history agree um, what we're going to do is we're going to rebase it so that you can send a clean pull request to the maintainer saying look the, the, this pull request applies cleanly on top of uh, commit number five at the moment it applies on top of commit number three so um, to to rebase our local changes on top of that local master branch so this is all happening locally in our repository now uh, so the reason why I've done it this way is so that, it's, that this can all happen nice and simply in our local repository and if we mess it up we can go back again uh, if you do mess it up and you want to know how to get get back um, uh, life before you messed everything up have a look at my previous video which is called difficult merges in git um, which has got a load of stuff about how to understand what's going on when you're merging and rebasing anyway um, in order to do this rebase or within your local repository you say git checkout fixbug which means just switch me back onto the branch called fixbug which remember is kind of conflicting with these new changes and then we say git rebase master which means take my branch that I'm currently on which is fixbug and make it look like it happened after master by reapplying the the changes I made on top of the changes that have been made in master. Once you've done that and if you have trouble with that check out that previous video um, hopefully it'll help you figure out what's going on. Don't panic that's the main message. It's hard to lose your stuff. Anyway uh, once you've done that rebase um, the picture's going to look like this where that bottom repository now has a branch called master with commits four and five in it like it was before uh, but now the branch called Fixbug looks like it happened after commit 5. So you've no longer got this branching history of uh, where there's conflict. You've just got um, your new stuff happening after commit number 5, which is how we want it because we want to be able to send it to the maintainer of that original repository uh, and say, look, here's, here's some changes that happen after, after what you've already got. Okay, so um, switch on to the Fixbug branch. Make sure you're on the Fixbug branch, uh, which you would have been anyway if you'd done that rebase. And then you can do a git push minus f origin fixbug, which means change whatever's on uh, my origin, which is my fork um, that I control, uh, whatever's in that fixbug branch, just throw it away and replace it with my, the new world. So now, um, the, this is the picture that, that your fork has now got that new thing called fixbug, um, which is a couple of changes that all happen on top of commit number five, and therefore. The pull request will apply cleanly, so you can just add a little comment to the pull request saying, oh, I've rebased this, um, so it's ready to apply. And hopefully that person will pull in your changes and you'll have contributed successfully to that project. I uh, hope you enjoyed these videos. Uh, if you'd like to support me financially in doing these videos, um, why not sign up on Patreon.com to give like one dollar every time I make a video, which these days doesn't seem to be very often, I'll try and make more. Um, if you like uh, things that are fun, uh, try looking for um, a game called Rabbit Escape on the Google Play Store. It costs 60p uh, if you buy it on the Play Store, but you can also download it for free from the website, which is artificialworlds.net slash rabbit dash escape. Um, it's also, there's also a PC version. This is an Android, there's an Android version and a PC version. Uh, we're having a lot of fun at the moment, making a lot of levels. If you come to the GitHub page of Rabbit Escape, um, it's all open source. Um, if you come to the GitHub page of Rabbit Escape, um, you can design new levels by just adding a little issue onto GitHub. Um, um, where new levels are coming along all the time. We're about to make another release with another 20 levels in it. And one of the developers said this game should have a thousand levels, so hopefully we'll keep going on that. Uh, if you want to see more videos, check out my YouTube page. Follow me on Twitter for um, like links to videos and blog posts and other stuff. Follow my blog if you want to hear about the open source projects that I'm working on and uh, things I've figured out. Um, have a look on artificialworlds.net to, uh, to see um, just all my open source projects, stuff like that. See you next time.